everybody. Jumbo. Jumbo, fellow adventurers, happy Friday. Welcome to another spiritual tune-up. Thanks for all of the amazing comments and the shares. It helps so much when you share with a friend. The stars, the thumbs up, the hearts, uh, the waving on Instagram and Facebook as I'm doing these things. And thanks for your questions below. Write one, write one right now and I may use it as a talking point tomorrow. Most of my questions and answers are pertaining to living deliberately, creating consciously in this bastion of perfection, heaven on earth, uh, where we all now get to live our lives. Today's question is really appropriate for the times we're in. Thanks for asking it. How to be in the world, but not of it. Now that's kind of my spin on the question. Sounds pretty uh, deep right away, but let's make it practical. The questioner said, Mike, how do you live within the world and perform your job? Say healthcare, for example, but not manifest more illness. Similarly, how do you, how do you hang out with the turkeys, but soar with the eagles? How do you not get polluted either clinically or psychologically with the junk and the gunk that's out there everywhere? I got a couple of things for you here. Really simply, first and foremost, you're not vulnerable. You're this ancient gladiator of love and joy. You're not a statistic. You're not an afterthought. It's not like this beautiful oasis is floating amongst the stars and then you showed up. What do you want? It's like you created this place. You're the first thought. You're the prime mover. Nothing random happens in your nighttime dream, right? You don't just get a flu or a disease in your nighttime dream. Everything is of your creation. And so it is here. Yet there is this soup of momentum where there's other players and circumstances and co-manifestors of all things we share and of no things that we experience privately. We are co-creators of all that we share, but we are the sole creators of our joy, of our happiness, ultimately of our health, of our abundance levels, of our friendship and creativity. You're not stuck in some mosh pit of the universe where stuff can happen to you randomly for no reason. Think of the folks like Mother Teresa or people who worked during the time of leprosy when it was, you know, like the real thing, uh, or people that were living in medieval Europe when various plagues were going around. How come they all didn't get wiped out? Because each of us individually creates our own realities and we choose from the various props, circumstances, ailments, diseases, good things, bad things to help get our groove on based on our overall focus. You're not susceptible to wild and wacky stuff. As Seth has said in his books, dictated by the late Jane Roberts, we all have like virtually every disease teeming inside of us right now, but they don't break out unless there's a purpose, a need, a cause, a reason, love and healing first and foremost. Sometimes getting sick is the beginning of a healing. Sometimes a pandemic like this is the beginning of a new world order. It's all good. It's all happening for you. But the baseline here is think not that you are vulnerable. You're not vulnerable. Come up with some affirmations. I am protected. I am guided. I am surrounded by loving golden energy. Will this always prevent contagious things from afflicting you? No, there may be great reasons that no matter what defense you put up there, because of higher views and greater desires of yours to heal, to see further, to love more, you're going to take the bait and have those things. And you're going to use contagions, con the, the concept of contagious as your vehicle for getting the affliction. Now, couple of things here. If you get sick, I hope I just made it clear, it's not a bad thing. Okay, You're not a bad person. It's not because your affirmations or your will weren't strong enough. What you need to focus on more than keeping disease away is loving your life, being a light, following your heart. 
which will automatically mean be of service from time to time, not selflessly, but self-fully. Be there with your heart. Be there doing what you love or going down the least sucky paths, as I talked about yesterday, because you know the yellow brick road is out there and you're going to find it and you want to be reachable. <clears throat> now, let me also caution when it comes to medical uh, issues like coronavirus or any other ailment, or when it comes to the roof over your head, always play both ends to the middle. Always, always, always follow your doctor's advice. Take precautions. By all means, wear a mask. These days, wear a double mask. Okay, There's no shame. This is not capitulating to a belief that you're vulnerable. It's just being smart. It's just being like, you know, I have some beliefs still left over that life sometimes happens to people, even though that's a total lie, but maybe there's some, some network in there. Just to make sure I don't sabotage myself, I, I think like this. I'm going to wear a seatbelt, buy health insurance, and double mask. The negativity done by these things that imply you're vulnerable is far outweighed by your innate natural positivity, particularly when bolstered by moving forward, living your dreams to the best you can, showing up in the world with precautions. Don't just go everywhere because you're a gladiator. Be smart. Search online. Do whatever you can to avoid the crowds. In spite of what I just said, play both ends to the middle. Know that you're not vulnerable. Know that you are protected. Know that all is unfolding inside the heart of God. And then take the precautions as well. Not a contradiction to worry about. Mini contradiction. Um... That's pretty much it. There's no shame in any of this. If you get sick, get the flu, get COVID, it's the beginning of healing. But you are not of this world as an afterthought. That's the title here. You are the first thought, the prime mover. Go live your life, have your dreams, show up with baby steps, and fear not. Even if it is fear, don't worry that you worry. All right? Happy Friday. Thanks again for the questions, for the hearts, for the waves. Post more questions down below. Let me answer them next week. Have an amazing weekend, the best of your life. And we're still doing the variable pricing. Um, this is an experiment. Uh, there's no telling when we might take it down or we might leave it up. For, uh, we don't even know. But many of you are signing up. You can join my Infinite Possibilities membership. Every Tuesday morning, I do a 30-minute mini manifesting workshop. February's theme, February is like what? On Sunday? February's theme for my membership is how to rock your life on earth. We've got a uh, mini manifesting on financial abundance. We've got mini manifesting on living deliberately. We've got mini manifesting on understanding setbacks. It's going to be an amazing month. Okay. And you pick your price. So, Check out the link below or swipe up on my, my Instagram to see my bio. Find out all the bells and whistles. There's so much in the membership. Could be yours for, what, 50 cents a day. 50 cents a day. Okay, so I got to go get ready. Right now, I'm going to prepare for Tuesday's mini manifesting workshop for members only. Uh, check the link below. Happy Friday. Thanks for letting me do this. It is such an honor. I'm so blessed. Hasta luego. Thank you, Winnie, Nelson, Diana, and Melly. Thank you, Snow White Aquarian and Clear Divinity. Look at these names, man. These are some cool people. See you Monday.